All right, YouTube, it's time for a Wisconsin primary video, specifically the GOP primary, because who fucking cares about the Democratic race at this point? Uh, I've been asked now for a week to make this video, and I, I held off until the 1st of April. I figured, well, we'll wait for, we'll wait for more polling to come in. We'll try to get the, get, you know, just generally understand exactly what's going to go on here. Um, as for my prediction in Wisconsin, I don't have one. And I'll tell you why. Um, I give a slight advantage to Trump for reasons that I will state, but it's far too close to make a prediction. You have several polls showing Cruz out by 10 points, the Fox News poll that they keep talking about uh, famously. However, that poll ran on the same time frame as a PPP poll uh, that shows Cruz ahead by one point, a statistical tie. Uh, a lead of one point means absolutely nothing. It's well within the margin of error. Right before that, you also had, and this is why I give Trump a slight advantage, that and the fact that it's an open primary, an optimist poll. Now, what optimists did is the, their sample size is larger than all of the other polls combined multiplied by two. Um, it's over 6,000 people in their sample size. That's uh, apart from the average poll that's somewhere from 250 to seven or 800 people. A uh, larger sample size means generally a lower margin of error. It tends to be more accurate. There's no guarantee of that, but we saw in, in past races the Trafalgar group, their polls usually of 1,600-ish people, were more accurate in general than most of these other polling firms. Uh, RCP is aggregating this poll for a reason. Now, the Optimist poll, what it shows <clears throat> is Trump ahead by two points, Kasich in second, ahead of Cruz by two points, and Cruz thus in third. Now, if that's true, then Trump would probably win by five to ten points in Wisconsin, uh, specifically because it is an open primary. Um, you can count on some thousands of independents joining that open primary in support of Trump, as well as disenfranchised uh, blue dog Democrats, as you may term them, centrist Democrats who lean conservative at times on fiscal issues, and really they don't like Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, have been jumping on board the Trump train in huge numbers. And in open primary states like with Illinois, according to the polling, Trump was ahead by two or three points, at most maybe five points. He ended up winning by double digits. Why? It wasn't all because of the Chicago riots that happened at his rally shutting down his rally and then going off to vandalize, loot, burn, rape, and pillage. It wasn't all of that. Um, he probably would have won by a fairly good margin anyway, simply because it was an open primary. And we've seen this time and time again. The problem for Ted Cruz, as I've said, is he's locked himself into the evangelical and far-right corner. That is, if a person is very, very conservative, and that's a minority of the Republican Party, they like Ted Cruz. If a person's evangelical, they tend to like Ted Cruz. I mean evangelicals outside of the Baptist part of the Bible Belt. The problem is these two groups overlap significantly. That is, if a person is a non-Baptist evangelical, chances are they're also quite far to the right. If they're quite far to the right, chances are they're fairly religious. And so his overall coalition is, is comparatively small. Now, <clears throat> Wisconsin is a must-win for Ted Cruz. If he does not win Wisconsin, he should drop out of the race. Why do I say this? Ted Cruz can only lose, I think, about 140 more delegates with all the states remaining before he drops below the point at which he can actually achieve 1237. Now, my prediction is this. If he loses Wisconsin, he's up, Trump is obviously going to win New York. You don't even need to really talk about that. I'm not even going to make a separate video for the New York primary because we already know who's going to win, and we know it's going to be by at least 20 or 30 points. Why bother talking about it? Trump is going to sweep up virtually all of the delegates in New York. Ted Cruz and Kasich might share 20 delegates between the two of them if they're lucky and that would really be the maximum level that they could hope for in the state of new york the problem for ted cruz is that if he loses wisconsin and then goes on to lose in new york he is perilously close to the point at which he is no longer mathematically capable of putting together another delegates putting together enough delegates to win without a brokered convention 
Now, when Ru let's look at Rubio, and this is why I'm going to make a prediction here, <clears throat> and a lot of people will disagree with me just like they did uh, with Rubio, and I turned out to be right. 99% of the pundits and media turned out to be wrong. Most of the people I talked to online turned out to be wrong. I was correct. I said early on, if Rubio drops out of the race, about half his support is going to go to Donald Trump. And people screamed bloody murder to me across social media, especially Cruz fans. They said, nope, absolutely no way because Rubio fans hate Trump. There's some deep-seated psychological disdain for Trump. Therefore, they will go to the next best thing, which is Ted Cruz as far as delegates go. It didn't happen. Ted Cruz got very little of a bump outside, again, of those religious states where Rubio had a very small fraction of a fan base that he would have had in the eastern states. If Ted Cruz were to drop out, most of his support would go to Trump. Uh, but what happened with Rubio is that before his disastrous debate performance, I've spoken about this, there were two fundamental groups of people that backed Rubio, and this was his entire coalition. His hardened supporters liked him because of electability. They thought he's got all the endorsements, he's got all of these insiders behind him, he's got a huge amount of money, he, his platform is issue-based, therefore he is capable of winning the nomination. He simply has to wait and grind Trump down. And then Ted Cruz, you know, he's too far right, and, and who cares? Kasich is a non-issue, and he ultimately becomes the victor. Ted, you know, Trump will lose Florida, Rubio will surge, Rubio will start grabbing up everything, and he'll hit 1237, which was never a possibility, by the way, mathematically anyway. But they kept talking about it as though it was, because too many states had already voted Trump was too far ahead. It never would have happened. Half of his supporters cared about electability. His soft support cared about his personality. See, personality is secondary to ideology. Trump has managed to put together a coalition that includes centrists on the basis that he's going to be good for jobs and the economy and things like that. They don't really care about... The, in fact, many of Trump's supporters don't even like Trump. They like what he talks about. They simply don't like the way he says it. <clears throat> when Rubio had his disastrous debate performance, the half of his supporters that were soft supporters, they all went to Kasich, which meant that as soon as he dropped out, I predicted this and I was correct, most of his remnant support would go to Trump because all they care about is being able to be elected uh, as the nominee without a brokered convention. People were are scared of that. If Ted Cruz falls below the threshold necessary to reach 1237 and he will come I believe perilously close to that whether he wins Wisconsin or not as soon as New York is done voting. He all of the, all that the media is going to talk about for a week thereafter is Ted Cruz can no longer get there. There's only one candidate left who can get there without a dirty brokered convention. Cruz has talked about how that would be a disaster. Why doesn't he back Trump at this point? And he will face increasing backlash should he go after Trump after that point. The problem is, at that point, it becomes impossible for someone like Cruz who has cast himself as, we're going to win it, we're going to be, we're, there will be no brokered convention, we'll hit 1237. Once it becomes impossible for him to do that, the backlash against him is naturally, well, you said yourself, you don't want a brokered convention, you would get the 1237, you no longer can, why are you still running? Essentially, at that point, Ted Cruz's support will begin to collapse. He will still win Nebraska. He will still win Montana. He will still win South Dakota. He has a chance maybe in a place like Oregon or Washington State. Everywhere else, his support will completely collapse. Indiana is the last state, I think, of any import that he'll be competitive in. Of course, Nebraska, Montana, South Dakota, that's a handful of delegates all told. Uh, Trump will no longer have any significant problem in most of the rest of the states. California, certainly not, probably not Washington State, you know, probably not Oregon. Certainly not a place like Delaware, New Jersey, uh, you know, New Mexico perhaps because of the border situation. And so my prediction is it no longer even matters who wins Wisconsin. If Trump wins, he gets the majority of, but not all the delegates. Uh, it's winner take all, but you have to hit a certain threshold. Nobody right now is polling at the level needed to hit that threshold. It's going to be a more, the winner will get about a third of the delegates for winning. 
the rest end up getting split uh, according to who won different chunks of the state. Now, if Kasich were somehow, let's assume the Optimist poll is correct and these three candidates are all within a near statistical tie. Let's say Kasich wins. Does it help Kasich? No, he can't win the delegate count needed. If Cruz wins, does it help Cruz? No, he still is going to lose more delegates to Trump and, and Kasich than he will actually win in the state of Wisconsin, unless these two seeming outlier polls are correct, in which case he might scrape by with a little bit more than half. But that still means that he can only lose about 120 more delegates before he's knocked out. He's going to lose more than half of that total just after New York. People will begin to say to him, it doesn't look like it's possible for you to hit 1237. If Trump wins, does it really help him? Yes and no. Yes, it certainly it really fucks with Ted Cruz. But ultimately, he still he he needs to force Cruz under the threshold necessary for him to ever get to 1237. Now, if it doesn't, if Cruz loses Wisconsin, which is, there's a 50-50 chance of that, it may be a little bit better than that. And then he loses New York, which he will, there's a 100% chance of that. Cruz is perilously close to that point. At that point, both of the opponents of Trump look very weak. Trump is well above 800 delegates. Um, probably around 850 or thereabouts. The rest of the states mostly are going to be kinder to Trump. You're looking at Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, was, uh, 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 Rhode Island, Connecticut, and so forth in the next race. After that slew of states, Ted Cruz will be below the total that he needs. I can guarantee that. That is the latest. It could happen on the night of New York if something unexpected happens in Wisconsin and or Trump's victory in New York is larger than expected. I expect, though, that the next five states that vote will knock Ted Cruz below that threshold. Um, Pennsylvania, I've seen people say, well, Pennsylvania will vote for Kasich. Not going to happen. He's not on the ballot. He's not on the ballot in Pennsylvania. He can't. People are going to go there. They're not going to see his name on it. A lot of them, I think you'd be surprised. Probably many tens of thousands of people will just assume he dropped out or something, and that's why he's not there. And they'll end up voting between Trump and Cruz. At the end of the night, Trump will probably win Pennsylvania. He'll probably win all five states. After that, even though a lot of those victories are proportional, that is that Trump's overall total only rises by maybe 150 delegates or so, it no longer matters because Ted Cruz is now below the threshold needed. He, he could win every remaining delegate, and he still wouldn't hit 1237. Logical individuals will then begin backing Trump at much higher levels. You'll see the RNC fracture. Some of the RNC will say, let's take it to a brokered convention. Let's see how it plays out. Hopefully somebody can get close enough to Trump to justify taking it from him. Ultimately, though, at the end of the day, at least a sizable minority of people within the RNC, they're going to crack mentally. They're going to say, well, it's no, we've got to now choose between do we want a fucked up convention that elects Hillary Clinton, let's face it. Or do we want to just fucking take the hits as they come, nominate Donald Trump, maybe we can convince him to take somebody centrist and safe on, you know, maybe a Paul Ryan or somebody, or even a Kasich as a running mate. By the way, Kasich would make a halfway, he'd be sort of the Biden of the Republican Party, but you could do worse than John Kasich, honestly. Um, he, he tends to be a bit of a gaff master, but then what do we know? vice presidential candidate makes all the gaffes, makes the presidential candidate look smarter. So that could be something that Trump might be willing to do. Uh, that would probably be a much more sensible arrangement for the RNC than taking it to a brokered convention. I think what you're going to see, a lot of Ted Cruz's fans, as Trump on that fateful night of five more states voting, shows that he's the only one that can get to 1237. And Ted Cruz cannot mathematically do so. There's no possibility of it. I think you'll see a, lar a large minority of Ted Cruz's fans abandon him. And I think that means that Trump will win all remaining states outside of the deep throes of evangelical Bible land in, the upper, in, in sort of the upper mountainous regions. Uh, you would think, again, South Dakota uh, or Montana or someplace like that. I think, therefore... Uh, Trump will hit the 1237 needed, especially if he wins Wisconsin. It all, for Cruz, it all hinges on Wisconsin. If he wins Wisconsin, 
and he can say, well, I've, at least I had another victory. It wasn't like the last time around when I didn't win jack shit. If he wins Wisconsin, at the very least, he can stay in with a straight face, not completely get beaten down by people for losing yet another race. But there's only a 50-50 chance he's actually going to do Kasich probably has just as much a chance of winning Wisconsin. The problem is, it's an open primary. You're going to have thousands, possibly tens of thousands, of independents and Democrats crossing over to vote for Trump. Now, why would they do this? Some of them, they feel disenfranchised by the Democratic Party. They're honestly joining the Republicans because they see a candidate there that more or less exemplifies the values that they want. Others are probably doing it because they're ambivalent about who the Democrat is. They're taking advantage of the open primary system to try to vote for someone they think will be easy to beat. The, the problem is, if they're doing that, they're complete and utter morons. It would be very easy to beat Ted Cruz in a general election. It'd be astonishingly simple. He's, he's way too far out there on religious issues. Trump's not. Trump will just say that what he said about abortion was a gaffe or poorly worded or whatever, and he'll get away with it. He's drawing hundreds of thousands of people into the Republican Party that never voted for the Republican Party before or ever voted at all in some cases. Um, so there is no prediction that I can make for Wisconsin. New York prediction is Trump wins by 20 or 30 points, possibly more. It's, he could win by 40. He could win feasibly by 50 points in New York. At that point, I think he probably gets every single fucking delegate. Now, it's a winner-take-most state. There's no magical threshold you can cross to make it a winner-take-all state. But if you get 55 60% of the vote in a three-man race, chances are your opponents are going to have to make do with very few slim pickings here scattered around the state. I think Ted Cruz might win a couple of delegates up in the far upstate, specifically near the Vermont border, oddly enough. Kasich might win a few delegates along the lake shore, along the shore of Lake Erie. That's basically it. Um, everything else will probably be solid Trump. In Wisconsin, I think the urban centers and their outlying regions, they'll vote for Trump. Some of the more rural spots will vote for Cruz. And then down sort of uh, closer to the Chicago area, you might expect a few dots for Kasich. Um, but ultimately, it's gonna, it's impossible to tell. Anyone saying that they're certain that Wisconsin will vote this way or that way, uh, whether it's Fox calling it for Cruz or people saying, oh, well, Trump's got this one in the bag, you don't, uh, you, there's no way to tell. Uh, the polling is simply too close. The Optimist poll is the most reliable. It shows Trump ahead by two points. But again, that's two points. We've seen in this race already people who are ahead by more than that lose states. Uh, does that make it perhaps slightly more likely Trump holds it, especially with an open primary? Absolutely. But, you know, saying someone has a 55% chance of something isn't that much better than just saying it's 50-50. The slimmest of advantages is a slim advantage, but, uh, you know, it could still easily go either way. Kasich could win Wisconsin. Again, not that it would help him if he does. And either way, they're going to be sharing the delegates more or less evenly. The winner gets a chunk of delegates for themselves. The rest is parceled up. The winner gets, uh, I think, like a 15 more delegates potentially with the polling the way it is than the next best candidate will. That's not a huge victory. For Trump, it would be a victory in the sense of really hammering Ted Cruz because it will have been a while since he's won any states, since, uh, since Maine or, or since Idaho. I can't remember which one. Uh, but quite some time. Meanwhile, what is Cruz currently doing? Every time he appears in the media, most of what he talks about is Trump. He doesn't talk about his own plans. He doesn't talk about his own ideas. He simply talks about how bad... Donald Trump's ideas are. That's not a victory. No, that's not a recipe for success. He's fallen for the bait, by the way. Um, and like as in, in, in full disclosure here, I'm a Gary Johnson fan and will be voting for him. I'm a member of the Libertarian Party at this point. I forsook the two-party system. But I'm still going to do these videos because, you know, you know, people are interested in the topic or whatever. Yes, Trump has a very slight advantage, but it's the slimmest advantage he could possibly have. At most, one or two points in polling, that advantage might not even exist. And then the fact that it's an open primary. I think there's more momentum behind Trump than some people are trying to insinuate. I think uh, their, their general consensus is Cruz has the momentum. 
their general consensus a few months ago was that Trump was going to drop out after Super Tuesday, underperform, and, and all hell would break loose, and he would, you know, endorse somebody else, or he would drop out and then go sulk or something like that. And they've been wrong every step of the way. If the pundits are have a consensus and say one thing, you can bet probably the opposite is true. So when I see them saying Cruz has it in the bag, that makes me wonder whether their internal polling shows something totally different. Um, so yeah, there you have it. And as for the Democrats, uh, I hate to say it, Bernie Sanders still has to win a, a monumental proportion of the remaining delegates to overcome the superdelegates uh, that have already been racked up by Hillary. Undeservedly, she didn't do anything to win most of those superdelegates. They just jumped aboard because they thought she was the better candidate. But still, it's near insurmountable. Uh, and, and going forward past New York, a lot of the territory is more friendly to Hillary Clinton, honestly. Um, However, Bernie Sanders will be at the DNC and he'll give a speech and he'll say, oh, progressivism has won. Socialism, it, sh it shows that for the first time, socialism is finally taken seriously outside of the socialist world. And then he'll, you know, there'll be a hammer and sickle banner behind him and Che Guevara's ghost will show up and say, yeah, this, uh, this is our candidate. Yay, socialism. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So nobody really fucking cares. I mean... I'm not, I wouldn't vote for Hillary or Bernie. I'm not voting for the Republicans either. It's just, I can't do it. In good conscience, I can't vote for any of these people. I voted for Trump in the primary. I've called on others to vote for Trump in their respective primaries. But that doesn't mean I'm going to vote for him in the general election. Uh, if anything, Trump will help crack the RNC further apart. Just like if you're a Democrat, yeah, of course you should vote for Sanders. I'm not going to support him. There's no way I'd vote for him in the general. I would have no intention of doing so. But if he wins, it'll, it'll fuck the DNC. You will see it happen. Uh, Hillary's uh, proxy runs the DNC. They're gonna, they'd be so pissed off, they'd probably refuse to support him. Oh, socialism's so evil. Well, you know, corporate leftism's really not that much better, honestly. Socialism. Him, uh, Bernie Sanders' ideas, way worse on your wallet, arguably better on, uh, on social issues, at least some of them. Now, at least he doesn't want to throw people in jail for 30 years for smoking weed. But then again, what sane person would? Another reason why Ted Cruz is basically doomed. The times are leaving his kind of Republican behind. He doesn't realize it. He comes from, you know, a red state. Trump comes from New York City, about the bluest place in the country. I think he's a little bit more pragmatic, I think, about some of these issues, as opposed to somebody who really doesn't know what it's like to be in a blue state region. That's about all. Peace.